We are here. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Sarah Black. I'm Theo Black. Theo a... is a zombie. Uh, uh, zombie. Yeah, I uh, I didn't get great sleep last night. I'm stressed out about things, and uh, here I am. That's my story. It's not that exciting. My back hurts a little bit. <laughs> Now that we've covered that, let's talk about the undead. The undead. So this, we uh, we watched the second movie in the night. It, 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 it's just called the Night of the Living Dead franchise. It should have a better moniker, but um, yeah. we watched Dawn of the Dead. I'm going to let Sarah do the this, this synopsis for this one. It's the one where they're stuck in the mall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, deeper synopsis. It is... There does seem to be somewhat of a timeline between these movies, so it is the the, the characters and 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 stories definitely change, but you know it's not a direct continuation. But the world seems to be the same. So it's years later. The zombies are kind of everywhere now. We're in the city. We follow um, a couple um, who are involved in a news station. At least she is, and a. Um, a pair of law enforcement officers of some kind who just met um, as they take a helicopter away from the city where things are getting really bad and they end up hiding out in the mall for a while. Um, and that is kind of it. I mean, I could give away the ending. There's always spoilers. Spoilers. Um, we are spoiling this movie. We are likely spoiling Night of the Living Dead, which I'm sure we will talk about in comparison to this. And there's even a chance we'll bring in Day of the Dead very briefly, though we're going to talk about that after this. Right. So spoilers. Um, spoilers here, everybody. Yeah, so um, this is... I, we have not watched the later in the series. I suspect this will be my favorite, though, regardless, because I, I think some of the later ones definitely drop off in quality. And, but who knows? Who knows? I could I've be heard wrong. the same thing, that, that the ones that come out post-2000 are not as good as the ones pre-2000. But And it's worth noting that um, Night of the Living Dead, I think, was 1968, right? Yes, it was 68. And Dawn exactly. of the Dead is 1978, and Day of the Dead is 1985. So you, you it's... I, re I read about um, Night of the Living Dead a little bit, not much. Um, and someone, I think it was Romero, there was a quote from him about how, you know, it just, again, he wasn't really going for, you know, anything, any big statements about society or something, but that, you know, the Cold War was a thing and, you know, yeah. space exploration, it's a year before we reach the moon kind of a thing. And, and I, I hadn't really realized that watching it the first time in part, because I wasn't really around close to then. Like, I mean, I wasn't around close then at all. Um, I was born in the early 80s. But then you get to something like Dawn of the Dead and it's like, oh, like malls and consumerism and, you know, the city and urban decay. And, yeah, you know, weirdly, this New is New York the... is, is, you know, and tenements just, you know, full of, of black people and, and uh, Latino people or uh, yeah. so on so mm -hmm. it's a lot easier for me to see how that one reflects the times than we, weirdly we were we, you and me because you know this is we're in 2020 here and of course it's a weird year anyways and malls are sort of not as much a thing this year just because of the pandemic they're they're they're, they're kind of on the indoor malls we're talking about like big indoor malls which were such a thing in the 80s and are kind of dying now yeah they were dying anyways and of course now it's even right. weirder i mean there's places like we live in los angeles so you know the santa monica promenade like it was interesting because it was a place when we were young and then it died kind of in the late 90s i think early 2000s when i was you know sort of like i think early in the teenager. 2000s in yeah. 2000 yeah like i was like a teenager when it was dying and then it came back so it's interesting mm -hmm. the, the cult well, they, culture but they remodeled it i mean I wonder how malls do in places like Minnesota, where it, it genuinely becomes unpleasant outdoors at various times of the year. But in yeah. Southern California, in a way, indoor malls don't make that much sense, even though, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a thing here. Yeah. Um, so I'll start first since you're a zombie. Yeah. I really like this one. I really like it because I really like the friendship between um, Trooper or Roger, who is played by someone 
uh, played by Scott Renninger and um, Peter Washington played by Ken Forey. I think it's really interesting that Romero claims and, and is probably true that he didn't cast um, uh, Dwayne Jones. Yeah. Um, you know, as any kind of statement as putting a black man in, in his horror film. But in each of these films, there has been um, a black man who has been part of the main cast. Um, yeah. I would say less important in Day of the Dead, but in Dawn of the Dead, Peter yeah. is a big part of, you know, and yeah. he also has a woman again at the center. And you could call it tokenism, but I feel like this is before tokenism. You know, we're still in 1978. Yeah, I don't you know, like I mean, you are making sure to be diverse in their casting. Yeah, this is, you know, this isn't Disney who's cast, you know, Daisy Ridley as Ray to sort of, you know, have good marketing. And no offense to Daisy Ridley, who's a perfectly fine actress, or the movies, which are mostly fine. It's really not about the quality. It's about that, you know, they may have done it for that reason. Right. Or maybe but also not. John Boyega, who's come out as saying that he was really disappointed by what they did with his character, too. So that he I think he felt like he was used as a token at the end. Yeah. Of the day. And so it's like you, it's not, you know, this is this isn't a big corporation doing it. Of course, it's George Romero, who by I guess I don't know his career that well, other than mm -hmm. these three movies, basically. Uh, yeah. But he did. But he um, but he had more money and he could have gone like a slightly more, you know, he's, it's still a, a it's 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 more money. I mean, he had no money for Night of the Living Dead, and then he had some money for Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. And so, like, he's now cast. You know, he could cast differently, or he could be more big budget about it. But no, he's he kind of cast. The cast is really not that different from what he cast um, uh, for Night of the Living Dead. And it's interesting because there's there's that joke. I forget which spoof movie it's in. It's in one of the spoof spoof Bayon Brothers spoof movies. I think growing up, that where they were like, uh, it's the uh, the black guy always dies at the beginning of the horror movie, which again, I, I don't know horror movies quite enough to know how true that is. I assume it is true if it's in a spoof movie, but in, you know, Night of the Living Dead, um, Dwayne Jones lives all the way to the end and then dies. So everybody dies in that one. And then here in Dawn of the Dead, Ken Forey is a little depressed. And so he might be the one we lose, but then he ends up living. So it feels like, um, maybe unintentionally George Romero is sort of not doing that, which I was discussing. So Sarah went away for a second and came back, but I was basically discussing spoof, like in a spoof movie, there's this joke, like the black guy, the black actor always dies first. Right. But in George Romero's films, he's like, nah, yeah, <laughs> like everybody, yeah. everybody dies in Night of the Living Dead. But then in Dawn of the Dead, Ken Forey lives to the end. So, right. Yeah. Right. Um, so I really liked his relationship, him, him and Roger. I think they yeah. have a great romance, even though Roger um, dies first of all of them. Yeah. Um, and I, part of me even feels like Roger's death is part of the reason he almost suicides at the end. Is like, he's just, like yeah. there's this, so, so there's four of them that end up at the mall and there's a couple and then there's Roger and, and Peter and, I just, that whole time, there's a lot of humanity in this film in that like Roger gets bit, but they like make a point of making his last days nice, even though everyone knows he's going to die. Like they're yeah. taking him around the mall. I kind of like that it's only four people because some of these, you know, like, like we'll see in Day of the Dead is kind of more what I feel like you see in a lot of zombie movies where there's like six or, you know, there's a group of people fighting the zombies. And I like that there's just four and that kind of makes the dynamics interesting. Yeah. But yeah, Roger dies and Peter's really sad. And there's this moment where he like sets up this romantic night for the couple. And then he like goes and drinks by Roger's grave. And I just, you're the one that loves male friendship yeah as a point of of your your film watching but that always really i, I really liked no it. this also, is totally i was thinking the same thing like i wanted them to kiss almost you know i was <laughs> like not and not in like a, 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 a even a romantic way i just wanted them to like you know it was yeah. like that kind of closeness you know there was it's interesting you know at the end of the world they form an intimate bond and i kind of get it and and you know it seems like Peter's genuinely upset as as Roger starts to behave erratically in that one as they're setting the the trucks up, and it's like yeah. you know he's about he knows he's about to lose his friend, and it's like yeah that's that's kind of you know there's so you're right there's so much humanity to it it's hard not to get invested in the characters 
Like yeah. that's really what worked. That's like, like in Night of the Living Dead, I cut you get invested. I got invested in Dwayne Jones, and so right. maybe that's why I might have even liked it a little more than you. Maybe I got a little more invested. Who knows? But like Dawn, Dawn of the Dead, like it's so easy to get invested into those characters because of how they're behaving with each other. Even the yeah. Even the couple, there's a certain kind of humanity. We know that Steven's kind of a tool, not a tool. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a, he's kind of a, he's, he, he's like trying to be a, a macho man, except that he can't shoot a gun and he's kind of, yeah. you know, he's kind of a dick. But like, there's a humanity in that, like, they don't hate him or anything. They just want him to not shoot the gun because he's going to yeah. hurt somebody. <laughs> like, you know, and then yeah. eventually they get him to help, help out and it all gets kind of figured out. And even our, 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 our female character, whose name, Francine is. Fran, right? Yeah, Francine Fran Parker, played by Galen Ross, who I don't think went on to be in much else. But like she, uh, you know, she is sort of like, I, we were talking about this earlier uh, before we recorded uh, the other day. But like, you can almost look at how these movies, you can look at the female portrayals in these movies and sort of feel, know what decade you're in. Right. Because like, she's kind of like, <laughs> She's not like meek or anything when it starts out. She's she she works in you know she works in TV, but she's not really you know once she once they get she to the she freezes early on. I think is kind of the big moment early. Yeah, on. like she, she's she could help Steve. I think, and she just stands there because there's two zombies on either there's one zombie on either side of her. Yeah, and, and then she after, doesn't know what to do. And after that, she's like, no. She once they get to the mall, she's like, no, no. You have to include me in your plans. You need to show me right. how to shoot a gun. You need to teach right. me how to fly. Right, because after that it. freezing moment, they also le basically leave her in a room by herself because they kind of figure she's useless. But they also don't leave her with any way of protecting herself. Yeah. So like, it's and she gets pissed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very it's and like there's this kind of humanity and like how she's. I mean, maybe it, it's of the 70s, I guess, but she doesn't really feel like her character could almost work in today and I wouldn't really think that hard about it. Like, right. you know, uh, there are plenty of people who will freeze up in a situation like that. Like I was right. annoyed when it happened initially, I was annoyed because it's like, oh God, are we going to have another Barbara character where she's just sort of frozen in all these moments? It's like, oh right. no, no, she's a real person. You know, she's there's right. more to it than that. She, the, the, the acting does pretty, does well, the character does well. So like there's, there's there's so much to the characters you know i'm kind of i'm doing in my zombie zombied out state i'm basically saying there's a lot to these characters right. that there isn't in night of the living dead you know yeah and there is a humanity that like we even steve who is an idiot all the way to the end of the movie when he dies i still have a humanity where i'm kind of sad that he died right so. It made their life. It made their deaths matter a little more than I think in *Night of the Living Dead*. I think when Dwayne Jones's character dies, it's pretty tragic, and you feel. But even then, it's 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 hardly. It's not really dwelled upon. It's the very last thing to happen. Like it's yeah. tragic, but I don't know how much you really know about him at the end of it all either. And I think I think the deaths in *Dawn of the you Dead*. It's really interesting. I read like. Pauline Kael, who I don't always, I sometimes strongly disagree with her, but she's a famous critic. Um, yeah. Saying that like, you don't care about the characters in Dawn of the Dead. And I'm like, what are you, what did you watch? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, in Night, it's, in Night, you really, there isn't any like backstories for anybody. And so you won't, except for maybe Barbara, which is why, yeah. you, but then she, you, you, there, the, you, what you get is character through action and like, we know yeah. Dwayne Jones can take care of himself because he's putting right. things together. We know that he knows how to shoot a gun. We know that he's, you know, not going to be talked down to. Like, there's right. all this stuff in there that, like, he, that, like, you can inform, that informs the character. You just don't know a thing about his backstory. So, right. Like, but, like, you don't know much about Peter, but he mentions that he has these two brothers that he's clearly left behind. So then you kind of understand that that might be part of his kinship with Roger as he feels like another brother. Like, that's all you yeah. needed. It's yeah. just that it, it, it related to the relationship he built. Dwayne Jones doesn't really, his character doesn't build any relationships with any of the people in the house. It's a much shorter time spirit period. He takes care of Barbara. Like, that's right. So there's, so you're right there's like a slight thing between him and Barbara. It, the thing is, you can, it's almost like when we're talking about it and you're right now, it's like, you can, I can kind of see how he went from Night of the Living Dead to Dawn of the Dead because in Night, like there's an inkling of like, oh, Dwayne Jones and Barbara, but yeah. it's not great. He's kind of just taking care of her because he feels, I think right. he almost feels bad that he hit her and he like wants to make sure right. she's okay now. And like, right. then, so like in Dawn, 
you know, George Romero like spends the time and the writer, whoever wrote it and they, whoever worked yeah. on it spent the time like building those relationships up in a way. Yeah. Well, but, cause they so, had the time to do it too. So yeah, a, that, I mean, that helps. It's two hours and like 15 minutes long, which- Romero is the writing credit on Dawn of the Dead, so. Oh, okay, good, good. I should have looked at that. Um, yeah, well, I, the, uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I, <laughs> uh, so the other thing is like, this movie weirdly made me appreciate Night of the Living Dead more because like Night of the Living Dead is, uh, it's not a great movie. I think we, I think I kind of am understanding why it was such a big deal culturally. You know, there wasn't many movies like it. The way it, you know, the way it did horror was kind of different. It was super low budget. And like, there weren't, even then yeah. there weren't that many, like it's, you really only in the sixties that you start to get that kind of low budget non-Hollywood filmmaking because yeah, I mean, it would have existed before, but it just wasn't that big a thing. And so I kind mm -hmm. of understand its place culturally, and I kind of like what it does, even if it's ultimately kind of boring in places. You know, it sets up the world really well, and Romero knows how to shoot a news sequence, and like, you know, right. he does a good job with all of that. And it's, it's so it's like seeing Dawn of the Dead and seeing him with a little bit more money, he doesn't like suddenly try to do this huge thing. He picks a neat location, and he does something similar he sets up some good, he does some more good news footage and he kind of sets up some good situations. And like, it kind of, you know, it, it's interesting. It like makes me appreciate that like Night of the Living Dead is constrained in a way that I liked. And he kind of goes slightly bigger, but still actually keeps it pretty constrained in Dawn of the Dead. Yes. You're not talking about a key difference to me between the two of them. Which is? The Go level of gore. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> amazing. Dawn <laughs> of the Dead has fantastic... Yeah. Um, gore. And I think that all goes to Tom Savini, who also plays one of the motorcycle gang, the, the one of the lead motorcycle. Um, yeah. He, this is his first time as an effects artist. Um, oh, I didn't know that. I, I've, heard, I've heard the name a, before. But. Yeah, I, I, this is where you and I are pretty weak. I don't know a lot about it. I know um, but I know it when I see it, and it is great. It's just great. I mean, if you don't like gore, you're not going to like this film. But it's not. It's so artistic, I want to <laughs> say. Like, the zombies makeup, like, you can see that this is still not a, a super high-budget film. It's not, like, what was it? I think it was... Um, um, I'm not going to find it fast enough to sound good, so we'll skip it. But it, 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 it's still a low-budget film overall. Their makeup is, like, blue. They just kind of look blue. But it's not just blood spraying. Like, there, there's a head that explodes. There's bodies getting, t like, it looks, you can see it. And, and it looks not quite real, but, like, interesting. And so, you know, I mean, it makes me think of The Thing, where it's like, well, it's interesting. I'm I mean, at... I am so bored by modern horror things where it's all mouths dropping and long fingers, as I've repeatedly complained, but also all the monsters are like teeth monsters with multiple mouths. I mean, it's it's not that interesting anymore. And this at least was like, it's, it's, it's and it was of... different each time. You know, you're not seeing the same deaths over and over. You're seeing different it's... kinds of deaths and different kinds of gore. He, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you, you, I wonder if it's what you can get away with to keep it a certain rating for some of the like long nails mm -hmm. and stuff because like that's kind of like the controversy and and some of that stuff. Well, we, but we also saw what went wrong with warm bodies where they had to remove some blood and so it looks like people have poop on their face. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, or or I, I think Jill was saying it's like old or dried you know, old blood or something that hasn't dried yeah. up. I don't know. Yeah, but that's not what I was thinking anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, Tom Savini has a few credits before Dawn of the Dead, something called right. Death Dream, Deranged Martin. So, yeah. I, so, but he's, then he does Dawn of the Dead and he does Friday the 13th, which I haven't seen. I know I should see it. It's one of those ones. Um, but it's interesting looking at his filmography because some of these are movies like I've heard of, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. he did, he also did the makeup for Day of the Dead. Um, mm -hmm later and he did some interesting ones here that I'm kind of curious about he did an HP Lovecraft thing where he did makeup for it yeah um and he's the one who actually directed the remake in 1990 of Night of Living Dead which I've been a previous in our last video was like yeah it's kind of boring <laughs> sorry Tom Savini but not a fan yeah. of that one um yeah but no, they, they, right in the beginning, there's a, a great, I mean, it's horrible when you're thinking about what they're actually doing. These policemen are running into this 
building and it's you know it's it's a it's a low income sort of it's 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 a you know, we would call it a project or something but whatever it's it's you know apartments and it's the idea is a lot of the people who are living there are you know some kind of latin and this racist policeman or is or black yeah. and this policeman yeah. is running around just shooting people because he's lost it and he's a racist asshole and yeah he blows someone's head up and the head just goes splatter all over everything. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic. Great... <laughs> well, you know, I saw, oh, I'm not going to remember the name. I saw a, a movie about psychics once that had, and it's a big one and I cannot remember his name. Um, I'll look it up. Um, that had a great head explosion, but then the rest of the movie, Scanners, Scanners has a big head explosion. And then to me, the rest of the film was just boring. Whereas... Mm dawn of the dead you have this head explosion at the beginning but then you have like knives going into heads like it's it's yeah. it's you know zombies take bites out of people it's really artistic i mean the yeah. the blood is unrealistically bright but it's a movie so you know yeah. it's okay yeah I, I i get why people don't like doing watching gore like i you know i understand there are people who are just like no nah, i just i'm not going to do that but you know yeah. it's not real and you know no one's head yeah. explodes like that and most yeah. i think horror people watching know that they just sort of enjoy the imagery of it you yeah. know not not the like idea that someone's dying horribly but just the sort of the it's artistic him, it's not real yeah, it's not real like it's 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 I, there's a quote in a documentary i watched once and it's this kid talking about like this photo he's looking at and he's like well it's it's and it's 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 really artistic and has nothing to do with anything like this but he's basically like well it's tragic and it's sad and it's it's bad, but it's also beautiful and you kind of have to, you can't look away. Right. And it's kind of like, I've always taken that approach to things. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm repurposing it for something a little sillier, but it's like, it's not real. It's it's an art, it's art, you know? Yeah. Like so you can make that. something sad, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. So. Um, so there's that. I wanted to make a plug for the gore in this film. And I also, I like the pacing of this film. Yeah. It, oh, something I was thinking about. So in all these movies, and I think it's kind of a typical zombie movie thing, because I think about other horror films, something like The Exorcist or Psycho, or even some of the, the lesser monster horror we've watched. You have the slow buildup, the blob, you know, you, you kind of know what's going on, but like bit by bit. With these zombie movies, it's just it just starts like you're in it already um and i think that kind of happens with 28 days later so like other zombie movies too but i mean night of the living dead you start with a little bit between barbara and her her brother but then it just goes and it's from then on it's it's that and in and this you know the zombies already there it starts with this big thing so you instead of slowly building to the threat you're shown the threat right away and then and then there's a slower part as they kind of adapt to the mall life, which actually becomes almost miserable in itself. That one moment where Francine is like, this is, this is terrible. What have we become? Because they're just living these strange, isolated lives in the mall. But I think it also helps because zombies aren't that threatening. Um, they're really slow and, and it's, it's more of a numbers game where they, they come yeah, at you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the threat of the inevitable like mm -hmm. no one zombie is going to kill you but inevitably you will die by these zombies because they're just going to overwhelm you and but yeah. the other thing about these movies besides that is that ultimately it's the people that get you killed not the zombies because yeah um in night of the living dead like literally the humans kill dwayne jones but it's also there's all that infighting and so on right roger and then, um, gets himself killed by being reckless well in dawn of the dead that yeah that's a little more that one's that one's i'm the, thinking more of the motorcycle gang because yeah. ultimately what what leads to ev to everything falling apart is that a motorcycle gang shows up and just destroys yeah. and then that motorcycle gang speaking of timeliness you know makes me think of all the mad max and um car stuff that was showing up in around the same time in I australia i was gonna say yeah mad, mad max is what 70 like something i, I think it's after i think i looked it up Mad first Max. mad max movie this is 19, oh my god 1979 so yeah so you're it's right. after yeah so anyway so so that's kind of the interesting things to me about because i'm again i'm not zombies not my favorite kind of horror but it's interesting to see that that instantaneous you know you're right in it they don't 
Be- again, because like one lone zombie wandering around, you just shoot it, you're done. Um, and then to see that that always, ultimately, the issue is w- what are the humans doing? Yeah, while well, it, the zombies, because there's nothing to a zombie. It's not. It, it's undead. It's there's not. It doesn't have a lot of psychological issues to delve into. It, or I, I maintain that in the the dead movies, it, they they stand in for what sort of the the regular theory of of zombies is that I've seen in videos and stuff that I've read, which is just like they're sort of a, a, a stand in for disease or or sort of the inev- something inevitable like a pandemic or, <laughs> or uh, death or death so. <laughs> yeah and so like they're they are a stand-in for the inevitable and so that's how it works theory wise about the pacing before we go into my my last thing i want to talk about which is the, but the pacing is interesting it has an action movies have an action hook usually like a lot like i don't know a mission impossible movie usually starts I guess I don't know because I've only seen like one or I've seen like three, but I only remember right. one. But like you, a lot of action movies start with an action beat and then go back to like start, then go back to level zero and work their way back, wake, work its way right. back up to various action beats. Right. And like a horror movie does something similar where it, it, a horror movie can do it two ways. It can start from normal and then wait a little bit, get a big action beat, go back down and then do action mm-hmm. beats, you know, or horror beats intermixed. Or mm-hmm. this version, which I like that you're right, but I like too, where it's like it kind of starts from a really high horror beat and it goes down, but it doesn't pick another beat back up for a while. Like it yeah. starts pretty high and it sort of waggles around there until the mall is safe. And then in the middle, it just drops all that, the horror beats out yeah. until we get the motorcycle game back. And it's interesting because it, it doesn't quite feel like, even though it's more or less, you know, something you might see in another movie, it doesn't feel the same because like, there's just really this kind of, you know, it's, it's horrifying. And then we get this kind of, it's a horror movie, but it's kind of fun and silly. And then we get to, you know, they finally are safe. And like, now we get to this, like, it's almost like a silly, like comedy moment, you know, it's not, I don't yeah. know if Dawn of the Dead is exactly comedy horror, maybe it is, but like, there's a dull, a ro- like, and then the tone starts to switch. And I remember it happening and everybody was really depressed walking around that mall. And I'm like, wow, it switched tones so well in there. Cause like, yeah. It, it, it drops it changes the tone right as all the horror beats are gone and there's nothing left like roger's right. dead like right as all that's like when they start to switch the tone over from kind of like silly fun horror and comedy to oh wait this is just miserable and it's a really good shift of tone and in fact it's so good that as we get towards the end the pacing towards the end doesn't work quite as well for me up to the motorcycle bit like some of that, it's just a little bit weaker, but that's because that that first shift is, I really enjoyed how they, yeah. they shifted. Anyways, my my last thing I wanted to go into, which is probably what, maybe what you want to talk about is, this feels more intentional than it was in Night of the Living Dead, though it still may not be completely intentional, that it's all about consumerism. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, one of my favorite bits is like, why are these zombies at the mall? And it's like, well, it's just a place they remember being fond of. <laughs> like, yeah. Like they're just compelled to return to the mall. And, yeah. <laughs> and there's something like, that is some dark humor. Like, and I like it. I like dark humor. Oh, yeah. And like, and it's, I think it even keeps going because it's like, here's our heroes. They're in the mall and they have every, you know, so you, you have everything you could ever want, this mall all to yourself. And it's just miserable because there's nobody else. <laughs> yeah. And like, to me, it's this weird sort of like, you could almost build it into, I mean, depending on how much you believe or don't believe in, you know, capitalism. I mean, that's, I'm getting into big political things. Here, <laughs> oh, but, God. But like, you can almost make it a metaphor for like what happens in capitalism when someone reaches the top and they have everything they want and, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You, you could kind of go to those places with it. Not that you have to, but it's an interesting, there's a lot of fun things you can read into it because of zombies in the mall and then our heroes in the mall and like, Right. Guy, biker gangs can't come for them all and like the whole thing Ooh, cat um yeah. anyways um so yeah i really like there, there's more i don't want to get into it too much because i'm not as good at this part and i'm a zombie right now but like there is there's more a more interesting read on consumerism than this than there kind of is on race in night of the living dead to me mm-hmm. because it feels a little more intentional not that there isn't something in Night of the Living Dead, because I keep thinking about it and sort of putting different things together and how it kind of works as commentary. But I feel like there's a little bit, I mean, it's longer. So there's also just more to it for that reason in, the, in Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Anyways. My final thing is there's something very video game quality to some of these, you know? And oh, right, yeah. What I, I was saying is, would you rather spend 
an hour and a half defending yourself from zombies in a mall or I'm sorry, in a, in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, or would you rather do it in a mall? And it's like the, the mall. I mean, like, are we yeah. even kidding? You want to explore a mall, you want to go. Out, and, the, and the movie does a really good job of, of, of exploring that fantasy too, of just being kind of like trapped yeah. in a mall. You know, this is too early for, you know, video games to have existed. I think the first games weren't, right? I think the first games weren't until the late 80s, I think, or something, or the mid-80s. No, they there's a, there's earlier than that. Games. Oh, I mean, it, it, your graphics are, I mean, Atari graphics weren't. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, because I know that, I think the original computer games are like, you know, a dot on a screen, and you're running around and collecting <laughs> things. <laughs> but yeah. I've, I had, you know, I had a, conver- had a conversation with them. Um, her uncle wants about it um but yeah it's it's like this is almost like i feel like this movie even works more in modern day because it really does feel like a video game well and there's and there's so many movies that horror films especially about being trapped in malls or having to take refuge in a mall and i wonder you know i i I, it always feels unlikely that you're watching the first but this has to be one of the first that showed that kind of, of situation yeah and i you know i'm also thinking in modern days i watched the first couple seasons of the walking deads uh, and i'm not going to spoil anything because i don't really have anything to say because really i only liked the first season and after that i thought it got progressively worse and i also think it's that thing where it's like you're like oh this is really neat and you're like you think it's creative but you're sure it's from somewhere else first and i'm Mm -hmm. like okay now i kind of know where all of some of the stuff from walking dead is coming from i knew where some of it was all coming from already and now I'm just like, you know, it's even less creative kind of than I thought. <laughs> like yeah. it just, in some places it feels like too much of a rip off of kind of what we're doing in the yeah. dead movies here. But anyway, yeah. so, no, no shame to anybody who likes it. 